Hi, it's Stephen here at Bland Designs, and I thought I'd share my latest uh, art journal page, which is going to be a round one. It's going into my round uh, art journal. And this is uh, based upon the Mission Inspiration Challenge for June 2016, put out by Mike Deacon. And if you don't know about the Mission Inspiration, uh, just go to uh, Mike's uh, website and you can find out all about it. Um, and a uh, previous uh, video on here, I did a review on Mike's uh, web page. So, this is what he has issued us for this month to do, the prompts. He says, to glue down fragments of food can labels, add a thin coat of gesso, make marks with household items, add splatters and drips of paint, add collage words for magazines, add your focal images, glue small circles of paper randomly, add stenciling, add stamping, and finally add doodling and journaling. So, you're going to see the process I went through. I did everything that was on here with the exception of journaling um, because I felt I had enough uh, words on the page, as you'll see, without any adding any more. And I did some of these not in this particular order. I changed the order a little bit. So, I've taken this video. I'm going to do a voiceover on the different sections and I'm going to speed it up so you don't have to sit here for days watching paint dry literally okay okay so at this point I'm going to lay down some gesso onto my sheet to keep everything from absorbing into the paper and uh, the way I do this is I put a scrap piece of paper underneath I pour a little gesso on top of it and then instead of using a paintbrush I'm going to be using uh, palette knife and I'm just smoothing it all over it. Um, I'm not that concerned about how even this is. It just adds texture if there's ridges. Uh, I find using this method however um, really helps it to dry very very quickly um, once you have it all on. And it's easy cleanup too because after I'm finished I just take that sheet away and uh, throw it out. So there I am, and I'm covering up my holes that are pre-made. This is from, from my round journal, and uh, I'll just go back and re-punch those after I've completed the page uh, here. So that's all there is to this, and then I'm going to hit it with a heat dryer, and away we go. Now the first thing on the card it says to glue down fragments of food can labels. So what I have here are a bunch of food can labels but I kind of cheated. I didn't take them off any of my cans. I simply went on to Google, did a search for food can labels, found different images of them and printed them out on my printer. And I'm going to uh, rip them up into pieces. And at first I wasn't really sure how I was going to lay these out. But uh, I thought if I tore them into strips and then using my collage glue stick from Ranger, I'm just going to glue them all the way around the perimeter of the page, sort of create a border. I'm not too concerned about filling in the middle section of this because uh, this is where my focal image is going to go and so there's no need to put a, a layer of uh, labels under that. So let me speed this up and you can watch the rest of the process.
Okay, so now at this point, I'm looking at the next step, which is says to add a thin coat of gesso over top of the labels. Now, the whole idea of doing this is really to make this melt into the background and give it a more consistent color tone to it all. It's a great trick for making things um, not stand out quite as boldly, especially if you've got some bold colors, like I have the red in those labels. So that kind of pops out at you. So all I'm doing is I'm pouring a little gesso out onto my uh, mat. It's a non-stick craft mat. And I'm going to take a spritzer of water once I wipe off the lid here um, because I don't want that to dry because then I'll have a hard time getting the uh, top off my uh, gesso bottle. So I'm spritzing it with a little water and mixing around with my paintbrush. And then I'm just going to take this and apply it right over the top of all the labels. And you'll see uh, as I do this, um, it doesn't really cover it right up. It's somewhat transparent. You can see the labels uh, through it all, but it kind of evens out the um, tonal qualities of it. Okay, the next step was to uh, make marks with household items. So I picked some colors that are already in the labels. I'm using both red and yellow. And I'm just going to spread those out onto my non-stick uh, craft mat. And the items I've picked are a toilet paper roll, a plastic bottle, and a plastic cap, and a popsicle stick. And I'm just going to spread the paint out dip those into that and make my marks. Now here's my first mistake. I should have used a paintbrush to spread out the paint a little bit better because as you'll see when I dip the toilet paper roll into it to create circles at times it got a little gloppy um, and then I tried to dab those up with a baby wipe and that kind of smeared things but then again it's just a background so who cares. I had a similar problem I don't learn very well or very quickly I guess with the plastic bottle but I just carried on I wiped up a few things like I'm doing here and I just carried on making marks because that's what it said to do make marks with it um, so then I, I took the, this whole thing as you'll see and I gave it a good dry and then we came to the next part which to, was to put splatters and drips of paint on this and uh, we'll return to that in a second <music> Okay, so now I'm going to add splatters to this, and that's the fourth step on the Mission Inspiration outline. And I chose blue as my color for this, and I'm going to use a fan brush as well. I'm also going to use uh, my spray bottle of water to dilute the paint a little bit so it'll drip and splatter a little easier. In fact, it splattered so easily that I managed to get it all over everything when I use the fan brush. I should have covered my work area over with a little bit of uh, plastic or something, especially in my computer that you can't see in this scene because I got a little bit on the keyboard. But that's the hazards when you're creating art, I guess. So you see here, I'm mixing up the paint with some water, getting it fairly fluid, and then I just tap the brush. And you can see I get a few drips, but I decide that I think I need a little bit more water with this and uh, so I try to load the brush up with more paint and I do get things a little bit uh, more runny as time goes by in fact I um, actually spray the the brush itself with uh, the water as well and I found that that worked pretty well
So now um, I'm looking at the steps that I'm to do, and this is where I started mixing them up uh, a little bit. Um, I didn't like them in the order they were in. So I decided I would drop, drop down to number nine, which is add stamping. And I have this stamp that looks like old uh, pages from a newspaper advertisements kind of a thing. So I get out my stays on ink because stays on, uh, when you're going on top of layers of acrylic paint, um, stays on better, yeah really. I'm putting a pad underneath here to give me a little bit of give when I put on the stamp and this is a large stamp as you can see so I've got a lot of area to cover. So I'm going over it with the stays on ink in black and uh, I press it down. I'm trying to ink it up very well. My stays on pad they dry out very quickly so I wasn't sure how good of an impression I was going to get with this and I didn't get a very good impression. It's sort of there but it's difficult to see. So I thought I'd go to the uh, another ink pad, um, an archival ink pad in black as well, and uh, re-stamp. And this worked a little better, although the background is so busy, as you can tell, that it's very hard to see um, the actual impression that the rubber stamp is leaving. But that's not really a problem. Um, it just adds visual texture more than anything and it, you know it's one of those things when you look at it after the final page is done and study it then you start to see little bits and pieces of the rubber stamp popping through which makes it kind of interesting for the eye so I went all the way around the, the edges of my uh, journal page with this <laughs> Now at this point I'm giving it all a very thorough dry because I'm going to do another step uh, that's not in order and that is to add my focal image. And I'd already thought about this um, before uh, I started the whole project um, and since food seems to be our theme I found an image that's a Norman Rockwell image actually uh, from one of his famous uh, paintings or illustrations and it's the Thanksgiving dinner with the turkey and everything coming out on the table and I'd already pre-cut this out but as you can see it's a little too big for the page so I've got to cut it back down uh, with this so it'll fit and so I did cut it down and then I used a uh, fluid matte medium uh, on, on the back of it and in the spot where I'm putting it on the journal page and I glued it down. I then went ahead and added, as you'll see, um, the collage words from the magazines and I'd found one that uh, said uh, tasty, something like that on it and another one that said time well spent and I glued those down as well. So the next thing on our list is to glue small circles of paper randomly. So again, uh, before I started making uh, my whole page, I did some pre-planning and I cut out some circles of wine labels, basically is what these are. And uh, I'm now going to just glue them down using the collage glue stick from Ranger right to my page. And it says randomly, so that's what I did. I put them down r randomly.
Now another element of this page was to add stenciling and again I had pre-selected this stencil because I really thought it gave sort of a vintage look but then I realized I didn't have a lot of space left on the page to actually do any stenciling. So I decided to take uh, masking tape and mask off uh, parts of the stencil that uh, I didn't want to appear on the page. So that's what I'm doing right now with uh, painter's tape is I'm just making a barrier basically around a piece of the stencil and that's the part that I want to put on the uh, page. And I was going to stencil this with white paint and using a makeup sponge and I did do that as you'll see. But the other thing I ended up doing was actually making a border uh, using this piece of stencil all the way around the outside edge of the circle. Um, I found at first when I laid down uh, some of the paint that I wasn't using enough paint so it kind of uh, blended into the background too much and I wanted it to be a little heavier so I put the paint on fairly thick but I also sprayed the back of the stencil with repositionable spray so it would hold it better um, and that way there wouldn't be as much of a gap underneath the cutouts uh, so that the paint would, wouldn't seep through. At least that was my theory and I do this a lot when I do stenciling and it does seem to work fairly well. Um, have to admit though this is really the first time that I've ever masked off my stencil and only used a piece of it and why I got that idea I don't know I guess I was just too lazy to look for a stencil that would fit. Okay, so the next step, and I think the final step, was to do some doodling or journaling. And I decided not to do any journaling because I already had the words that were cut out from the magazine. I thought that was enough. So I did decide, though, to go around the perimeter of my round page uh, with a food, football marker. And this writes pretty much on anything, and there's a lot of layers of stuff on here. And I decided to go with a faux stitch just because it, it sort of went with the old style picture, sort of a sense of vintage. So I did that all the way around the outside of the picture. So to make the figures pop out, I outlined them with uh, the black marker as well as the text uh, piece from the magazine. And so all I have left to do is just sign it and I call this page finished. So I hope you enjoyed watching my process here and uh, seeing all my trials and tribulations of doing a page, but that's all part and parcel for art journaling. So thanks for watching. Bye for now.